Last year was the start of a brand new era for the second Doctor with Big Finish. For years they've been doing short stories and companion chronicles and guest appearances where the second Doctor has been primarily voiced by Fraser Hines. But last year there were big changes afoot. In February 2022 they released The Annihilators starring Tim Traylor as the third Doctor but also featuring... Uh, Michael Troughton, one of Patrick Troughton's sons, as the second Doctor, and Fraser Hines as an older Jamie. They were doing missions for the Time Lords, but they couldn't really say much more about that. And that basically confirmed that big finish we're going to be diving into the Season 6B theory for the second Doctor's final days, which was calcified in Beyond War Games, which was released last July. We got two pretty decent stories. It was unambiguously the start of a brand new lengthy arc for the second Doctor, but he had no companion this story ended with a story a four-parter with the ice warriors where the second doctor met up with the brigadier voiced by john Coulshaw. basically after being scooped out of time after the events of the war games where he's meant to be regenerating he's been employed by the time lord's celestial intervention agency the cia and also by a mysterious time lord called raven after the events of the first box set, Raven thought, you know what, this Doctor does pretty well with companions, so let's send him away on another adventure. Twelve months later, we have the follow-up box set. Doctor Who, the second Doctor Adventures, James Robert McCrimmon. This takes place after the War Games, of course, for Jamie, because suffice it to say it turns out that the time lords actually botched jamie's memory wipe not because they need some massive contrivance in order to make this um doctor companion pairing work and to make sure that fraser hines doesn't have to hurt his voice doing a much younger version of jamie for these sets but also because of some weird event that happened shortly after dropping off victoria in fury from the deep there was some other adventure that has been uh, unexplored up to this point which means that jamie is able to retain many of his memory memories with the second doctor and is able to become a fully fledged companion again we've got michael troughton and fraser hines here starring in three stories each of them are two parts each we've got uh, three hour long stories we've got jamie by mark wright the green man by paul f verhoven and the shroud by bob ayers let's talk about jamie first so the second doctor has been sent by raven to 7076 edinburgh because there's some strange deaths some strange occurrences happening in the scottish capital strange things are going on people are turning up dead in the street and the second doctor confused as to why he's here steps into a tavern and gets a very hospitable scottish welcome let's play a clip from jamie Not the most salubrious of establishments. Should be just the ticket. What'll I get you? Oh, um, um, I don't suppose you have a pot of tea for one and some digestives? You what? Yes. Never mind. Perhaps just a small plate of bread and cheese. That's it? Yes. Not seen you before. You want to be careful. Oh, why is that? Strangers are getting noticed since the deaths started. Deaths, you say? Aye! Started doing by the grass market a few months back. Poor souls found in a devilish state. Murder, if you ask me. Is anything being done? I mean, to um, investigate? Where do you think you are? Magistrates don't give a stuff about a few dead beggars. Hmm. Right. I wonder... When you say devilish state... There's your bread and cheese! Oh, thank you. Um... Oh, seem to be a little short of money. <laughs> Why don't you let me get this, Doctor? Raven. That was a scene there with the second Doctor being greeted by the friendliest Scotsman. Anyway, so Raven is essentially the Doctor's pseudo-companion in this story. Raven is played by Emma Noakes, who has become a recurring character in the second Doctor adventure box set. Um, she is absolutely fantastic, by the way. We'll, we'll, del we'll dive more into the character of Raven and Emma Noakes' performance later on, but she is absolutely superb. Now, this first story, Jamie, written by Mark Wright, 
essentially shows what Jamie has been up to since being dropped off with his memories allegedly wiped by the Time Lords all those years ago, and how he's had an incredibly tough time of it in the intervening decades. He's been locked up in a, essentially an asylum, because he's having these false memories, he's having these dreams of these adventures that can't possibly be real, and he's incredibly ill now in 1770s uh, Edinburgh Castle. Uh, so the Doctor does not know that he's being set up with this meeting with a future version, um, with, with an older version of Jamie, which has been engineered by Raven. And he's trying to go through this murder mystery with these mysterious deaths that are happening on the streets of Edinburgh. It is a very good story in terms of like, here's how we're setting this up. Here's how we're going to be reintroducing Jamie in a much more organic way, but also playing its cards to an extent where, you know, this isn't going to be business as usual. We need to establish what Jamie's been up to. We need to uh, have that sense of anticipation. We need to see what the second Doctor is going to be like with a companion with Raven in this case and then later on we'll reacquaint them together the second Doctor and Jamie but there's a couple of really cool twists and turns where he meets a version of Jamie which seems to have all of his memories and the second Doctor does the same thing he does in the five Doctors and is like wait a second this isn't right you were meant to have your memories uh, wiped by the Time Lords yourself and Zoe so there's some really cool like um, misdirection there um, in, honestly, it's a cool, atmospheric and moody story. There's, like, ghosts and spectres and spirits, all the stuff that you'd expect from, like, gothic literature of the time, of the, you know, the time period that this story is meant to be taking place, 1776. I'm not particularly, like, fawning over the story. I thought it was all right. I thought that Fraser Hines was really strong in it as well, because he has to depict these multiple versions of Jamie. There's flashbacks to, uh, like, a season five event where you've got the second Doctor and Jamie... Um, after dropping off Victoria, the event in the story that means that his memory wipe was bungled by the Time Lords. You've got different versions of Jamie in the present of the story, the 1776 setting. Uh, one of them being the older Jamie, who has just been having an absolute rough time of it. You've also got Daisy Ashford, who's got a small role in this story as well. Daisy Ashford plays Liz Shaw in the Third Doctor box set, but here she plays like a Scottish nurse who is wanting to do more within the profession, but she can't because she's restricted by her gender stuff like that it's all very solid it's all good this sounds a bit confusing to be fair it's not because the story does a bad job of explaining it it's that i'm doing a bad job of explaining it i'll be completely upfront there it actually works really cohesively it works effectively in terms of the different time settings and the different uh, periods in the doctor's history the doctor and jamie's history that they revisit over the course of this story it's very easy to follow it is quite emotionally impactful but outside of that there's not too much happening in Jamie. I liked it quite a bit, but it is almost like a, an obligation to the to these box sets. Okay, let's reintroduce Jamie. How is he older? How have you gotten around the memory wipe of the Time Lords? They do it in a good way, in an interesting way that doesn't feel like a cop-out. Oh, it turns out that the Time Lords were just really, really incompetent. It turns out there was some weird, complicated event in the second Doctor and Jamie's past, which prevented the mind wipe from happening the way it was supposed to. And even though it didn't fully take... It has still had very negative repercussions on James Robert McCrimmon's life in the 40, 50 years since he last saw the Doctor in the events of the Highlanders. Because the events of the Highlanders, they still happened. He just didn't go away with the Doctor at the end, at least in terms of Jamie's memory, his recollection of the event. Now, what really stands out for this box set is the second story, The Green Man by Paul F. Verhoeven. So the story starts... Kind of like in Medias Res, in terms of like the second Doctor and Jamie's uh, time as a new Doctor companion dynamic, where they've been on several missions for the Time Lords already. Raven, uh, and by extension the Celestial Intervention Agency, have sent them on plenty of missions, one of which was actually the Annihilator story. So if you want to know where the canon is, uh, the Annihilators takes place between Jamie and the Green Man. For those of you who really want to make sure that your timeline's in order, there's some really fun, like, flashback, almost like Family Guy cutaway-esque, like, oh, and here's the time we had to defuse this temporal bomb. Cut the red wire. Okay, cut the red wire. Like, because <laughs> the, they're in a time loop. Very, very funny stuff. <laughs> really laugh out loud funny. But however, 
the inciting incident is that the Doctor and Jamie are fed up and they want a holiday. So to compromise, Raven gives them a new mission, should they choose to accept it, of course. Here's a clip from The Green Man, where Raven wants the second Doctor and Jamie to find a Time Lord in a space hospital. Who is this missing person, this someone important? His name is Tannerus. Tannerus? Never heard of him. He's a member of an old Gallifreyan family of some little renown. Look at the scanner. This is the last image we have of him on record. Oh, that nose doctor. Not much of a looker, is he? <laughs> and that haircut, it's worse than yours. Jamie, there is nothing wrong with having a strong signature look. So, we're rescuing a Time Lord, are we? Correct, Doctor. But Tannerus may have regenerated since we last saw him. Regenerated? Never mind that, Jamie. Ah, but... So you'll need to be absolutely certain you've got the right person. But don't worry. You'll be there for as long as you need to get the job done. I see. So, no ticking time bomb? No. No impending planetary collision? No. No monsters? I guarantee it. Ah, well, that doesn't sound too bad. There is just one thing. Ah, oh, I knew it! Only those who are very ill can gain access. But we've already paid for your stay, and it's all inclusive. So we're both going to have to pretend to be sick, is that it? Not quite. Doctor, you'll be posing as a patient. McCrimmon, you're his carer. <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jamie. What precisely am I pretending to be afflicted with? Pretending? <gasps> oh! 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 Maybe I'm the only one who found that funny, but I found that so funny. So the premise of The Green Man by Paul F. Verhoeven is that the second Doctor and Jamie are going undercover in a space hospital. The second Doctor has been deliberately made ill in order to make the ruse more credible. But it then becomes a almost comedy of errors inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window, where you've got the second Doctor and Jamie observing from their respective hospital staying rooms what's going on in this hospital, the strange goings on at night, the weird plants that are appearing in the garden, the people who are wandering around at night, and including some uh, a very large green man skulking the corridors. The second Doctor has been poisoned, so his faculties are not quite with him, meaning he makes some very dumb decisions, and Jamie is just sort of along for the ride for it. And it's very, very funny. Michael Troughton and Fraser Hines are absolutely wonderful together in this story. And this isn't just the second Doctor and his Jamie business as usual. Jamie is obviously older, He's wiser. He is a seasoned second Doctor companion. Even though he's had a few decades away, he's still decades smarter. And he knows basically how to work around the second Doctor now. And it does feel like a fresh new dynamic all over again. Where you do have, like, you know, Jamie is from uh, 18th century Scotland. So he doesn't understand all of the lingo. He doesn't understand all the references. And, his, and you know, his understanding of science is not quite where it would be for a standard Doctor Who companion. But in terms of street smarts, in terms of his actual, like, ability to traverse these precarious and dangerous situations, he does a really great job of rising to the occasion, particularly in this story. And then you've got the second Doctor, who is like, okay, Jamie, we wanted to go on holiday. We can't solve this mystery right away, because that means our all expenses paid stay at this hospital resort will be over really quickly. And Jamie is like, okay, I get it, but maybe we should figure out what's happening here. And it's done in such a clever like way. Paul F. Verhoeven is really walking a tightrope with the story, where you want those comedy elements, where you want the second Doctor and Jamie to want to enjoy their holiday and not solve everything right away. But you also want them to be likeable and proactive. And the way that the story, particularly in the second half, unfolds and blossoms like a flower, you know, there's the botany theme, I guess, over the course of The Green Man, is so clever that it just immediately makes you want to listen to the two-parter again. Paul F. Verhoeven is not a seasoned, big-finish writer. 
Uh, this is his second big finish credit. The last one he did was A Fear of Flying, which was a uh, which was a Doctor Who short trip from February 2022. But after this, The Green Man, I want to listen to like I would listen to an entire box set, nay, an entire saga written by Paul F. Verhoeven. This was such a funny story, entertaining. The stakes felt tangible, though it never lost sight of the human element. Great writing, great dialogue, a real sense of pace and wit to it. Great classic season references, but I won't spoil them because I think that's meant to be a twist. And it culminates in a wonderful scene between Michael Troughton and Emma Noakes as uh, the Second Doctor and Raven, respectively. And the Second Doctor gets angry at her, and Michael Troughton rises to the occasion with his performance. You're so used to, like, the bumbling cosmic hobo, the fun, you know, short time traveller with the oversized jacket who has fun at everybody else's expense sometimes, and here we see a new side to the Second Doctor that is very rarely seen, even in like the TV series with Patrick Troughton. This feels like the great extension to the character that these box sets are made for. Beyond War Games last time didn't do too much in terms of pushing the Second Doctor as a character, revealing new depths or revealing new aspects of the character after War Games, but that was fine. It was meant to be laying the new status quo down, establishing the new characters, establishing the new plot threads, but what they do in The Green Man in the last like five, ten minutes is almost revolutionary for the Second Doctor. And it's stuff I really, really want to see more of going forward. This was a spectacular story. One of my favourite stories so far, like just generally of the year. Great sound design as usual. Great music. All of the wonderful stuff that you expect from Big Finish. But it's the writing and the performances that are matching the writing that makes this one for the ages. The Green Man was outstanding. And then we go to The Shroud, which is also very good, but it does have the disadvantage of having to follow the Green Man. Now, The Shroud, by Bob Ayers, takes place on the planet Nineveh, which has been overcome by this massive shroud. Basically, just full-on darkness that is encompassing the galaxy and has now reached this planet, just as the Second Doctor and Jamie uh, are sent there by Raven and the CIA. They meet a group of people who are essentially the form of, uh, who are essentially the resistance fighters for this planet, and they're fighting against the squids, who they believe are the cause of the shroud which is encompassing the planet. Uh, we've got a full, eclectic, fun cast of characters who the Doctor and Jamie are introduced to, including the unique way that they see in the dark. Let's play a clip from the shroud. I'm just going to put a cap on your head and position some electrodes on your scalp. Hey. It won't hurt. Ah, well. Fariba was born blind and developed the Dreamscope to help people like herself with visual impairments. It uses echolocation, like bats or chitterbugs, and interprets the signals to build up an image of your surroundings. This is fed by electrodes directly into the occipital lobe of your brain. Bypassing the retina and the optic nerve? Precisely! No need for light, and your dreamscope will sync with computers and other devices, so you can see what's on the screen. So, Jamie, I think I've got everything in place. Is that comfy? Aye, right enough. I'm going to switch it on. You might feel a bit of vertigo to begin with. Oh, 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 oh no, no! Oh, Jamie, you all right? Uh, do doctor, I, I can see you. Well, well, not see you. It, it's weird. You, you, you're in my head, in my mind's eye, like, like a dream. Hence the name Dreamscope. And Fariba, I, I, I can see you too. And Eskanda. You're a lanky chill, no mistake. Oh, it's make me dizzy. You'll get used to it. Oh, Paul! How many times? Don't creep up on me like that. This is Paul, part of my team. Hello. Good to see you, Paul. Who are you all talking to? Take a seat, Doctor. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> I do like a hat. Projects like the Dreamscope are the very reason why the school was set up. A foundation dedicated to solving real-world problems through the practical application of science. Faraba is an award-winning cybernetics expert. I thank you. Paul is a brilliant software designer. I do my best. 
And Donya, who brought you here, is a gifted engineer. Or was before the current crisis. She's taken rather enthusiastically to her new role. Ready, Doctor. Switching on. It's kind of with the shroud where you realise why this box set works as well as it does. And it's the shortened two-part format. Now, in Beyond War Games, we already had a two-part story, which was the final beginning, written by Mark Wright and Nicholas Briggs. And then you had Wrath of the Ice Warriors, which was a four-parter, which is fine. It was, it was a solid four-parter. But because you have three two-parters, much pacier, much punchier, and I think this is a really great format for these box sets moving forward. Unless there are, you know, bigger, longer epic stories that they want to tackle, but for this box set, the two-part approach works like a dream. You get six episodes, but three very different, eclectic and distinct stories. But for The Shroud, the reason that that, uh, that approach works so well is that this could have been a bit of a slog if it was a four-parter, but at two parts, it means that you can get a decent amount of time learning and getting to know about the these, uh, these resistance fighters who are trying to fight against the squids. You also are able to get uh, the second doctor meeting up with the squids and learning about what their deal is. And then the second half just goes in completely different directions than you'd expect. And you get all these twists and turns without having to wait like an hour to an hour and a half in order to reach that end game point. It's really well paced. This is a really well paced box set overall, but it's with the shroud where you really feel the advantage of that format. And it really works so well here. So the Shroud feels a little bit like a weird story to put in a box set that is meant to be the Second Doctor and Jamie reunion box set. And I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. It's just that I want you folks to understand if you do decide to dive into this one, that this is not just we're reintroducing the Second Doctor and Jamie dynamic and it's three box sets that are exploring that. No, Jamie reintroduces Jamie and the Second Doctor together. The Green Man is the closest thing in this story to a conventional, but maybe not, Second Doctor and Jamie adventure. And the Shroud, though, is a little bit more unorthodox in that the Second Doctor and Jamie are actually separated for a big portion of it. Jamie doesn't actually have that much to do in the Shroud, comparatively speaking. The Shroud is mainly there to set up not necessarily a new status quo, but okay, this is what the third box set that comes out next July might have to deal with the fallout and the consequences of. So in that respect, it's a good way to sort of like continue the second Doctor Beyond War Games saga. It's a good like hook for next year's release. It's so frustrating that these are yearly releases. July of every year and you get a new second Doctor box set. These are too good for them to just have one of them a year. I have, oh, oh dear, that's a bit sad. But anyway, The Shroud is a really compelling planet under siege story. It's not a base under siege, it's a planet under, under siege when it comes to The Shroud. And it's a really interesting approach in terms of an invasion story because the selling point for it, or at least like the way that the humans compartmentalize the motive for this invasion, is that you make the planet dark the crops die, the animals die, the agriculture fails and everything, the people die, but all of the infrastructure still remains. So you've still got all of the um, the energy supplies, you've still got the buildings and everything else. It's just the people and the life that are gone, which makes it a really ideal way to invade a planet if you want to inhabit and colonize it afterwards, if that makes sense. Really novel approach that I'm not really sure that I've seen Doctor Who do. I've not even seen that much sci-fi in general do it, but maybe that could just be indicative of how poorly read I am when it comes to broader sci-fi. It's a really good premise for a story. I can't talk too much about the rest of the Shroud though because there are spoilers though, like in terms of what it's setting up for the next box set next year, in terms of uh, the real identity of the squids, where the Shroud has come from and its relation to the squids etc. But I will say that the Shroud is a really satisfying end to the box set. It's got some really interesting moral ideas happening in the second half. Emma Noakes once again returns as Raven. And let me just say, Michael Troughton and Fraser Hines are terrific in this box set. You've heard the clips. I've sung Michael Troughton's praises in The Green Man, and I think Fraser Hines is outstanding throughout the whole box set as well. But the MVP of this box set is Emma Noakes as Raven, the villainous Time Lord who is assigning the Second Doctor and Jamie their missions. She is sadistic, she knows it, and she likes it. She's such an unconventional villain for a classic, um, for like a classic series adventure, particularly with black and white Doctor Who, because it's not just like the master, whereas like, you know, 
cosmic chaos. I am the Moriarty to your Sherlock Holmes, and I know that, and I love it. Raven is, like, bureaucracy and, like, the greater good of the Time Lords personified in an incredibly malicious, villainous character, and Emma Noakes is genuinely scary. Like, you listen to her, like, her dialogue, particularly at the end of The Green Man, and you are scared for the second Doctor and Jamie. You do not know what this character is going to do. You also, because they're a Time Lord part of the CIA, which is still a pretty vague entity at this point, you do not know what they are capable of. But any threat that they make, you're pretty confident that Raven and the CIA can back it up. It means that you get these stories where the Second Doctor and Jamie are constantly on the back foot in terms of like the ongoing arc of the Beyond War games, even if they are fully in control of the A plot for these respective stories. This was a very, very good box set. I feel like Jamie... Uh, is not incredibly ambitious in terms of the A-plot. It is mainly a structural feat in regards to assembling this Doctor-Companion relationship again while making it credible and effective. It's cast really well. The performances are great, really moody. It really hits its stride, though, with the last two. If you want a conventional second Doctor and Jamie adventure, and I don't mean conventional in, like, a negative term. I just mean if you want great second Doctor and Jamie banter, it's the green man where you'll get it. Less so in the Shroud, but this is still a really effective general horror story. A planet under siege by darkness and squids. This was really good. I still recommend Beyond War Games as well as like a great way to establish uh, the Beyond War Games setting, Season 6B. And also what Raven is up to behind the scenes, particularly in the post credit scenes for both of these stories. Of course, John Corshaw's in it, and it's really, really great. But yeah, so James Robert McCrimmon is a terrific continuation. Troughton and Hines are superb and on top form. Emma Noakes is genuinely scary, and it makes me sad that these releases come out every 12 months. But The Second Doctor Adventures, Beyond War Games Part 3, comes out in July 2024, and I hope that, you know, I hope that it I hope that they're able to make these releases come a little bit thicker and faster. But you know, when they land, they're landing. And I'm really happy about that. I'm really looking forward to what Michael Troughton does in the Once and Future story that's gonna be coming up in the next few months. I'm really looking forward to his story. And I hope that it's really, really good so that people think, you know what, let's let's listen to what Michael Troughton's been doing in these box sets. And then they're treated to these really, really good ones.